If the power demands in a 110 volt electric circuit in a home vary between 220 and 2750 watts, what is the range of current flowing through the circuit? And it gives us a formula here that the watts equals the, uh, the voltage E multiplied by the current I. So we have our variable defined for us because that is what it's asking for. What is the, what is the range of current? And so we define our unknown based on what is being asked and it's given to us, I. So this range here uh, vary between 220 and 2750. So I'm going to put those on either ends of this double inequality, 220, 2750. And something is going to be in between that. I'm going to assume here, the problem doesn't say it's including 220 and 2750, but I'm going to include that it is. And when we write these, we usually write these in numerical order from least to greatest. So therefore, we're going to uh, put our inequality signs in that order. So 220 is less than or equal to 2750. And 2750 is greater than, if I'm reading in the reverse order, greater than whatever I put in the middle. So the, um, the middle is, is our, our found range that we're going to have. And so we have um, the 110 volts, so that's our E, and then I, so because we have our watts. Watts equals this EI, so we have, I'll write that up here, watts equals EI, just to rewrite what I've got there. And that's why I've, I've got um, 110 for E, and then I is our unknown, and I'm going to write the I like that so it doesn't get confused with a 1. Now we can solve this double inequality just by dividing everything by 110 and let's take a look at this right here this will be 2 so 2 is less than or equal to I is less than or equal to Let's see, 11 goes into 27 uh, twice with 5 left over. That goes in 5, okay, 25. So the current, the range of current, we can say, is between 2 and 25 amps. And I'll just rewrite that here. Current ranges from 2 to 25 amps or amperes. All right, so that's just a, a quick look at uh, understanding some inequalities. Right, here's a couple more. If I just have in general x and y, say x is greater than y. And uh, another way to say that is x is more than y. x exceeds y. Uh, and of course, reading backwards, you can always read it in the reverse direction, y is less than x. So I'm just giving you some, some verbal uh, clues here. Now let's talk about another example. x is greater than or equal to y. And we, we know that mathematical symbol, greater than or equal to. You might also see it written as at least. x is at least y. Or x is no less than. Sometimes that trips people up. No less than. No less than y. So it can be equal to. That's, that's okay. But it can't be less than. But it leaves that open for it to be greater than. x can be greater than or equal to. So this no less than is written as uh, greater than or equal to. There's another one. We've got x is less than y, x is below y. Of course, reading in reverse, y is greater than x. And then how about x is less than or equal to y? So x is no more than. You might see it written like that. No more than y. Or x does not exceed so kind of the, the reverse of no less than. X does not 
exceed y. So it's important to read these and, and kind of rephrase it for yourself into one of these other, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, um, before you actually write the symbol. All right, so there's a little on the understanding of uh, verbal inequalities.